Hello Patricia, my name's John. I make cool things out of scrap metal and cutlery. I heard you like birds. So, I've made you one. This is a special request from Anton. And here it is, a lovely little song thrush. I've also filmed the process for you from start to finish. So there's a detailed description of the cutlery, the tools I use and the techniques. Hope you find it interesting and I wish you a Merry Christmas. Enjoy the video. Right, first job is to make the wings of the bird. I've got these extra long dinner forks, the king's pattern, the decoration here as well. What I want to do is form the shape of the bird with the forks like that. But as you can see, I just need to curve these round a little bit more and then I want to decorate them with these which are quite a nice pattern called Anida Cantata and that is going to have to wrap around the outside as well. So in order to do that I've made a little jig which is just made from a couple of old uh, G clamps. Basically the premise is the fork goes in here And then what I will do is heat this up with a blowtorch, create the curve, open it up. I will then put the patterned handle, the Anida decorative spoon handle, on the outside. Shape that to the exact same curve. Do that uh, twice and I've got each side of the bird. to get quite hot and that really nice glowing orange colour get the metal nice and soft Okay, so see I've got quite a nice fit there, but what the heat does obviously is put a sort of nanoscopic tarnish on the top, these sort of yellows and reds and blues. So I need to get all that off, I can do that with a polishing mop. There's also a few little marks from the hammer which I need to get out, so I will do that with one of these. So this is a die grinder, really useful little tools from fine sanding to this is a flat disc, it's a much more abrasive thing, that's for sort of cleaning up welds, getting them down to a smooth sculpted shape before polishing them. Little sanding rolls, very useful. Much more abrasive for uh, sanding things like that, or even cutting discs for, well, cutting things in half. Pull the trigger, this spins around at high speed, and you can use various different grits of very fine sanding paper. So for example, this is 320 grit, that's like a very mild sandpaper. So this is a polishing mop, fairly soft bit of material, just running it in a standard bench grinder, runs at about 4000 RPM, and I'll just rub the compound into the wheel. trick with this stuff is little and often.
So I have two spoons here. This will end up being the central tail feather of the bird and the underneath at the back. Normally when you look at a spoon there's uh, generally speaking quite a sharpish transition between the handle and the spoon itself. This one is elongated and I really like that shape like chest up towards throat and beak. It's just, uh, it's just a nice shape and that will form the underbelly of the bird tail feather and this will ultimately about here be the beak of the bird. So what I need to do is attach these two spoons together in perfect alignment. And I'm going to do that with a MIG welder. MIG incidentally stands for metal inert gas and uh, essentially what that means is that you are firing a piece of metal out here in the shape of a wire. So if I pull this trigger you'll see that come out. When this makes contact with the spoon it will complete the circuit and that will melt this mild steel wire and this steel together into one solid lump of metal. There's a big old lead that goes all the way back to the welder. There's actually a pipe in here which has a mixture of argon and CO2, 95% argon, 5% CO2. That's a shielding gas. Argon is inert and what that does is it covers the molten metal pool as you're welding. So you get a nice smooth weld, no holes. Anyway, that's a bit of the science behind it. So now what I've got to do is weld these two together just about like that. So I'm just going to mark that just so I know roughly where it sits. Um, I'm sure you can imagine that trying to hold these fiddly little spoons together that want to move left and right all the time is not easy with G clamps, screw clamps or anything else. So I use a little trick here which is a hot glue gun. Okay, that is nice. So I'm just going to hot glue that in position with a liberal amount of hot glue. Trying not to get this on my fingers because it is the burn that keeps on burning. Okay, so before I actually weld that, I'm just going to check that from all angles. I'm going to look along here. You've probably got a better view of that than I have. Make sure these handles are in a directly straight line. And I need to make sure that this spoon is not offset to the left or the right because the bird will look slightly odd if it is. That is pretty good. Very good actually. Okay, so now I need to just put, I'm going to put three probably little tack welds in here. Right, there we go. Three little tack welds. Right, while that is still hot, I'm going to use a little bit of white spirit, any sort of alcohol, ethanol based product will work and that will help me to get off any glue residue. I managed to get some fibres from my glove on there so it looks a bit red. You'll also notice that uh, there's a lot of heat to come through, it's about, I don't know what it is, 2000 degrees is it, the melting point of steel, so obviously you get more heat marks. And also the tiniest little bit of penetration of the weld through the spoon which is good because it shows that it's now solid metal all the way through like I'm not going to say I could stand on that because spoons aren't that strong but I couldn't pull that apart it's very strong what I need to do though is clean that up and uh, I'll do that again with the tools I used earlier so that's the die grinder with 320 grit and 600 grit prepare for the transformation. Right, so as I mentioned earlier, what I'm really doing is scratching the surface with finer and finer grit. And then when I go to the polishing mop, all of that will disappear. So you know what that looks like. I'll bring this back in 10 seconds and uh, you can see what it looks like. Very nice. Again, all this will get a little buff up at the end anyway, but it's nice to keep it as 
shiny as I can while I'm making it. Right, so I've got the underside of the bird formed. Got these two little forks which I've cut at an angle. I've tested the fit, which is quite important. I've cut a little angle on the front of each one so they will sit together. Something like that. So I'm going to tack weld these together now. And I'll hold them in place. Just test the fit one more time. So now I'm going to put a big weld on the front and the back, smooth that flat, and then we'll put the decoration pieces on the outside. form of the wings now done. That's going to fit in here, just like that. And we need these decoration pieces to fit on the outside. Got a little bit of trimming to do here. Alright, that's a nice, good fit on that one. Right, so I'm happy with the fit, I'm just going to weld all over that seam and over the top here to attach this piece to this piece. Looking good. Nice, just need to clean that up. Right, so that is the most complicated bit of the whole bird made. So now we'll give that a little fit. So that is going to go in just like that. Right, a little bit of a mop. There we go, very nice. Right, a little bit of tidying up to do inside. This is just a Dremel with a very fine wire brush. Right, the bird needs some tail feathers and uh, Anton helped me choose these, so that is his uh, input into this build, hope you like them. Nice flowery little pattern. Yeah. So I'm going to trim these to length and then we'll make them a nice fit.
So obviously I need to shape this feather here. It needs to bend down from about this point to match the contour of the underside of the bird. I want to get the fit as good as possible. Also need to leave space to get the legs in, which will uh, tap into these very small little slots here. this point the bend increases one thing I need to be aware of and that is going to be three spoons stacked on top here and I need to leave enough space for the third handle to fit in there or the spoon that sits on the top will not be quite flush so I'm going to just bend this tail down just a fraction. Perfect. Check the fit again. And now I've got enough space. Perfect. We need to adjust that now a fraction. thing with making these birds, occasionally I get a full set of spoons and I can make them exactly the same but generally speaking every single piece is an individual fit so they have to be tailored to perfection. So that's a nice fit, I like that a lot. Just give it a quick polish before I put it in and then we'll get it well done. to clean up. I shall wait until I've done the other tail feather before I do that. Okay, that's really nice. So this other one is going to go in, in exactly the same way, just the other side. It's got to go over the top, so it's going to be just a fraction longer. So I just want to bear that in mind while I cut it. Right, so that's the tail in place. I really like the look of that. Uh, a couple of heat marks to clean up, but I've got to put the legs in next, so I'll show you how I make them and then we'll weld them in. They're going to put another couple of heat marks, so I'll wait to clean these up until I've got the legs on. So let's make some legs. Okay, so I'm going to make the legs out of this, and this is welding filler rod for a TIG welder. Uh, so if you remember what I was saying earlier about the MIG welder, when I pull the handle it shoots wire out, and that's what adds material to make the weld. The TIG welder works slightly differently. This is the TIG gun, it's very precise, you can hold it like a pencil, and it has no wire coming out, but it has a very sharp point of tungsten, a bit like the end of a dart. Uh, and what you do is you hold that, press the foot pedal, it puts put a massive amount of uh, heat, like a plasma arc if you like, to the metal, and then you have to manually add the material. So instead of the wire coming out, you are by hand, heating it up and just feeding this in to the weld puddle like that. It also makes brilliant bird legs. This is made of stainless steel, 2.4 millimeters thick, and I will now show you how I turn that bit of rod into bird's feet. Right, I've trimmed myself off a couple of pieces of this TIG rod, and what I'm gonna do is just trap one here in the vise. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up in the blowtorch and I'm going to wrap it around here three times, or four actually, but I want three perfect circles to form the bird's uh, foot and that looks a little bit like this. Right, so I'm now going to do this one uh, the other way, and that will give me a left and a right foot. Okay, 
Okay, so there are my feet. I've trimmed the excess off and uh, given them a quick polish. Just going to hold them up here to where they go through. Right, I've welded those legs in place. I have cleaned up the belly, given it a polish, looking lovely. So that's basically the underside of the bird complete. Now I've just got to do the back and the head and uh, move these legs forward to the right position. So the next there's uh, two back spoons to go on here. Trim that off at about that point. So the spoon, the spoon here is going to fit nice and flush on there, starting to disappear in here. And then this one there will slide over the top like that, and the handle will come up and shake around to form the beak. Okay, I've got to get the final back spoon on here, quite a sharp bend. It fits quite snugly on the top. And I just need to match the contour here and work out the approximate start of the beak, which should be about there. And hopefully, you can now see the final shape of the bird coming together. Right, so I'm going to have to obviously taper this to form the shape of the beak. And the underside of the beak has to have a nice little curve on it as well. So I'm just going to put a little bend in here. Right, pretty good. Final shaping will be done with all of these tools. Right, quite a lot of fettling to get that as a nice fit. I'm pretty happy with that now, so I'm going to tack along here so the spoon is captive. Yep, it's nice. Okay, coming towards the finishing straight, I've just got to make the head. So I've got my remaining items here. And what I want to do is decorate the side of the head with this pattern here. So I'm going to cut these in half. Along that line, the eyeball is going to fit in Something like that. Okay, this is a center punch, just enables you to punch your little hole, which the drill will sit in so it won't wander off. I'm going to drill it from the back side though, so I need to know exactly where the center of the eye is. Okay, I'm going to start with a small pilot drill, which is a lot smaller than the eyeball. So the trick to drilling through metal is to do it at slow speed. And the reason you do that is because drilling at high speed builds up a huge amount of heat in the end of the drill bit and it blunts the drill bit. Also you want to use a, an oil to help with uh, reducing the friction, reducing the heat even more. Uh, this is a cutting oil called CT90, so I'm just going to put a tiny little dab on that little centre punch mark we made. That's enough. We'll just go straight down through. Lovely. 
properly. Nice hole, bang in the middle. Now I've got to go up the drill sizes. I'm just going to find something that is uh, the same diameter as these ball bearings. And that is going to be a five and a half millimeter drill bit. hole, bang in the middle. Perfect. Okay so a nice cut down the centre with a cutting disc. Just need to clean all these burrs up with the die grinder and then we'll trial fit them on the side of the bird. Very nice little finishing touch to the head I think. Okay, so I've just clamped those two halves together against this round bit of tubing and the reason I've done that is because I just want to put a little curve on the back of these to mimic the shape of the back of the bird's head. So I'm going to blow towards them and uh, get that curve in place. So what I need to do is uh, take the head off now, taper the sides to the approximate shape of the beak and I can tack one of these in place and then add material to fit up the beak, shape it and uh, just give the bird a final polish and she'll be done. Looking nice. Right, I've tacked the eyeballs in and I've tacked these pieces on now. Obviously got a nice curve and a curve underneath as well. I now hold this teaspoon up you start to see the final shape of the bird come together. Okay, the beak is now welded on and what I'm trying to do here is uh, clean up the transitions in the eye sockets and under here. So there's a little diamond encrusted dremel bits. I'll go over with the fine polishing pads after that. A little bit of final shaping to do on there. Almost done. Right, well there you go Pat, I heard you love birds, so uh, I hope you get a lot of pleasure out of this one, lovely little song thrush.